Good afternoon, folks. I hope that you can hear me well. It's another episode of Let's Talk About It Now. Thank you all for getting on the stream. Whether you're catching the stream live or whether you're catching the stream after it's broadcasted live. I thank you all for getting on the stream. We're going to get into a, a topic tonight. And the topic is how the modern woman is being used as a weapon against the men of this society. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. I hope that you all can hear me well. I'm streaming via. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I hear you. uh, Good evening to you. I can't see your names because uh, StreamYard has this kind of thing set up where, well, Facebook, I should say, has decided that they won't allow you to post your name and uh, i left some instructions in the facebook group for you guys to uh to let me know that you're on i appreciate all of you that are watching i simply can't see your face and i can't see your name but i see you posting i see that you're there i see one uh one person who's watching says very well thank you for letting me know you can hear me well I hear someone saying good evening. Good evening back to you. I hope that you had a great evening today. I am watching with you. I appreciate you. I can't see who you are, but I definitely appreciate you. I appreciate your support. We're going to get into a subject tonight that is not a pandemic, but what I call it is a mandemic. I call it a mandemic. That's a new word. Hmm. Hopefully I'm the first one to say it. (laughs) <laughs> that way I can coin the statement for all you content creators on YouTube. I said mandemic, <laughs> not a pandemic, a mandemic. <laughs> Shout out to Margaret. Thank you for getting on the stream. Also, I'm glad. See, Margaret did something very good. She put her name in it to let me know who she was. I appreciate that. So anyone else who's on the stream, put your name in there. Let me know who you are because uh, Facebook won't allow me to see you. Not with StreamYard. I'm using a different platform tonight. So if you could, so kindly, put your name in to let me know who you are so I can give you a shout out. I appreciate that. After that, we're going to get right into it, folks. Just put your name in. Let me know who you are. Put your name in the comments section. Awesome. Abdul. Shout out to Abdul on the stream tonight. Appreciate you. Yeah, we're going to get into it, man. We don't need a whole lot of people. I promise you that. This subject tonight will reach many. So I thank all of you that had the uh, support of getting on the stream tonight. We're going to talk about something that's very seldom talked about. It's going to be triggering for some. I will tell you that. Uh, Some of you are going to be triggered, but it's okay. Get triggered, and but listen. Listen to what I'm going to say. Because this is a real issue, and it's a real problem that's going on in, these, uh, in this society. And it's going on huge in big numbers where men are concerned. Men that are some, in some cases I have to say as a disclaimer, some who are guilty. Yes. Oh, absolutely. But there are also so many that are innocent, and yet their name, their reputation, their careers have been destroyed as a result of of these different alleged accusations that are brought upon them. And even after finding out that they are not guilty of what they've been accused of they've still had to go through the rebuilding process of building their career not only building their career but building their reputation their respect in the circles that they are in they had to build their respect their reputation and some of them have not been successful in building that reputation because they've been found guilty in the court of public opinion. First, 
in the court of public opinion. Understand this, that what you say against anyone, it doesn't matter who they are. If you make a public accusation, the public gets to judge first, long before the individual that you're accusing gets to see a jury. But yet due process, due process says that an accused individual, regardless of what that accusation is, they have privilege, privilege to them as a U.S. citizen, the right of due process to be judged by a jury of their peers. Now, we already know that's a bunch of, you know, we already know what that is. <laughs> So cause sometimes you have a poor man sitting on a stand being judged by a bunch of middle class, upper middle class individuals. So we already know it's not a jury of their peers. So let's get that straight before we start. But what makes it more complicated is when they allow the public, an unexperienced, ignorant, blind public, who watches television and believes that what they hear on the news is the Bible. Oh yeah, I said that for all you Bible readers. Oh yeah, people that watch the news, they believe the news is the Bible. They don't never, they never take into consideration that what's being said could actually be false. Could actually be not only false, but mechanically put together to destroy an individual be it male or female but tonight we're talking about a mandemic because this is not a situation that takes place in large numbers with women no it doesn't happen now i want you all that came into the stream tonight whether you catch the stream on youtube or whether you catch the stream on facebook i want you to give me your likes and i also want you to give me your shares and i also want you to give me your comments on what you feel about this stream be it for or against what i'm going to say tonight again i'm not going to hold back any punches i'm going to talk straight to you direct i'm going to keep it 1000 and if many of you are honest with yourself you're going to know exactly at what points that I talked tonight where you need to keep it 1,000, keep it 100 or 1,000, whichever number you choose to select. But just be genuine in your response. Don't be disingenuous. We're going to talk about a real problem that's going on today. Uh, a real problem indeed. And it's affecting a lot of people and it's, it's affecting their lives with stories accusations real or imagined that this system this society is allowing women the modern woman and when i say the modern woman i'm talking about all women on the modern level i'm not discriminating against any nationality i'm letting you know that anybody that comes into this space of the me too movement or the feminist movement. They're responding in accordance to the cadence that's been set for them to respond to. Okay, so that's just as a backdrop to get you prepared for what I'm going to discuss tonight. Again, the subject, how the modern woman, how the modern woman is being used as a weapon against the men of this society. This is what we're talking about tonight. So how have they been used? We're gonna talk about it. There is a book that has been published and it's available on Amazon. Ladies, if you are watching this stream, go and look at this book. It's called How. Oh. It's on Amazon. It's called How to Destroy a Man Now. Acronymed as DAMN. That's what it's acronymed as. 
But the name of the book again is How to Destroy a Man Now, not later. No, not later. Now, how to destroy him right now. And it details how to do it. I'm gonna read a little bit from that uh, from that article so that you can see what I'm talking about. And it was done by a PSY.D, which is acronymed as a doctor of psychology. She 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 wrote this book and she left her name anonymous. Uh, are you wondering why she left her name anonymous? <laughs> she left her name anonymous while she detailed how to destroy a man again, not later, but now. And this is what she started off by saying in this book. This is in the in the introduction portion of this book. She goes on to say, a woman, as a woman, we have been oppressed by men's physical advantages over us since the beginning of, beginning of humankind. <laughs> wow. But now, in today's modern society, the tables are finally turning. Ladies, listen to this. This is coming from a female who's a doctor of psychology. She wrote a book specifically for you to teach you how. Understand this. How to destroy a man, not tomorrow, but now. And I want you to pay attention to, as I read, what do you see in the society right now, Bill Cosby? What do you see in the society right now, R. Kelly? And I know some of you believe that R. Kelly was guilty of what he was charged for. And I'm not I'm not surprised that you do because you don't need proof to the public because in the court of public opinion, you believe anything. Again, like I said in the beginning of the stream, the news is like the Bible. So whether you get the facts or not, all you need to do is hear it and oh, 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 oh my God. I can't believe he did that. Oh, what a horrible man he is. Why? Because a few females came out and accused him of doing something, but yet they take no accountability at the fact that they were there. I mean, come on, ladies, think about it. When you commit a crime, what's the first thing they try to identify? Whether you were present at the time of the crime. They put time stamps with everything. Okay. So if you're if a man is being accused of anything, where are your time stamps? Oh, yeah, we're gonna get into it tonight, man. But this is a mandemic, not a pandemic, a mandemic. It's a pandemic if it's a disease. It's a mandemic if it's a disease to destroy men. What is this society coming to? That now the narrative is to simply accuse a man without no proof. Oh, we're going to get into it, man. If you accuse anybody of anything, the burden of proof is on you. On who? The accuser. Oh, if you accuse anyone of anything, the burden of proof is on you to, to prove your case. It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. Uh, but what I'm finding very, very interesting in this society is that you don't have to prove anything when it comes to the modern woman because all she has to do is say that you did something. That's all. Just say you did it. That's all. And for all my brothers and men that are listening to this stream, let me let, let me let me tell you something real quick before I get into this. For those of you that work in the office environment. You know the young lady that you're very attracted to, but yet she's giving you no sign that she's attracted to you? I'm gonna tell you right now, stop it. You're making a fool out of yourself. But for those of you that continue to make a fool out of yourself, and you go up behind her because she tells you her shoulder, you know, it's a little tight. You've been sitting at this cubicle for a long period of time. 
you know, oh man, my shoulder's tight, but you're attracted. So what do you do? You go up behind her and you start massaging her shoulder and she lets you do it. But what you didn't know, what you didn't know, I'm gonna let you on, I'm gonna let you in on some game right now. What you didn't know is that she already let somebody know that you are already showing signs of being attracted to her. And that when she told you her shoulder was tight, she was setting you up. So what happens is when you start to do your little massage, right? She already told her homegirl, Becky, who's in the other cubicle, to walk around about five or ten minutes after you arrived. And everybody's paying attention. Just believe that. So while you're massaging, she sees you doing it and she issues a, what's called a third party accusation against you for sexual assault or sexual or, or sexual harassment i should say what do you mean by that charles oh i mean this i mean that the girl becky who she told before you came over there and massaged her shoulder that's the one who went and reported you for sexual harassment it wasn't the girl that you was massaging this is the kind of machination that goes on in the office environment and many of you brothers, you get caught up in this because you're simping. You're looking at her. She's fine. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She smell good. You know she's not interested in you, but you keep going over there telling her how attractive she is and how good she smells instead of paying attention to the fact that she's not interested in you. So what are you doing, my brother? You're making a fool out of yourself. And you're setting yourself up with your little massages yeah you're setting yourself up you're setting yourself up for her to set you up with a third party accusation of sexual harassment and you wonder why you lost your job bro you wonder why you lost your job i know you're still wondering why you lost your job you think it was the boss you think it was everybody else but you don't think it was the chick that you was talking to. Ah, you don't even think it was her. She set you up long before you massaged her shoulders, man. Oh, we gonna get into it tonight? Again, we're talking about how. This is what we're talking about tonight. How. We're talking about how the modern woman is being used as a weapon against the men of this society. This is what we're gonna talk about tonight. Buckle up your seatbelt. And for all of you coming to the stream tonight, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you coming onto the stream. As you come into the building on YouTube or Facebook, hit that like button, man. Hit the like button. As you come into YouTube, hit the like button. Hit the share button. Set the algorithm so we can get this kind of message out. Too many of us are becoming victim of this type of machination. And I'm going to describe to you what machination means in this stream, because this is the garbage. This is the trash that's going on in the society today. And it's being supported by government. Uh, uh, it's being supported by government. Yeah. But let me tell you something. For those guys, for the men that are watching this stream, how many men do you know that bring up accusations against women for sexual harassment on the job? I know some of you ladies think, oh, men ain't going to never uh, charge us for sexual harassment. They like us to touch them in their private areas on the work site. They don't have a problem with that. They don't have a problem with us squeezing their backside on the work site. Uh, they ain't going to do nothing but smile and grin and let it go, right? Well, many of us do, but I'm going to tell you why we do it. It ain't because we don't feel like we're sexually harassed. harassed. We do it because we know ain't nobody going to believe us. Ain't nobody going to believe us. They're going to they're gonna believe you on face value, ladies. They're going to believe you on face value. What are you saying, Charles? Are you saying that all women are lying when they bring these accusations up? No, I'm not. I'm saying that many are not lying, and I'm saying that many are. And I'm going to show you that, too, as we go through the stream. But here's the, here's the thing to consider. Here's the thing to consider. If you have been abused in any kind of way sexually, should you not report it to law enforcement? Should there not be a paper trail 
that supports your accusation, irregardless of how old it is or how long it's been, huh, should there not be paperwork, a paper trail that supports your accusation? Ladies, should there not be? Or would you like to be accused of something with no proof? Oh, man, let's keep it 100. Let's keep it 1,000. All right, let's be transparent and be real about what I just said. Would you like to be accused of something that you did not do and there's no paper trail, there's nothing to prove your accusation, and yet this man who you accuse, his whole life is destroyed. His reputation is in shambles. He has to build his career. He loses his job. He can't get a no new job. If he's incarcerated, oh, we, man, we, we ain't going to go there. If he gets incarcerated, you already know what that means. He has to uh, register as a sexual offender for the rest of his life, even if the accusation was false. Mm. And here's what adds more injury to in, more, more insult to injury. You know, here's what pours the alcohol on the cut. To make it burn more. It's that when a woman is found that she lied with an accusation. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever heard of a woman being accused or charged, I should say, with filing a false police report? Have you ever heard of it? I'll wait. No, you have not. No, you have not. And yet, that is a crime on the books. It is a crime to fall to file a false police report against anyone. And it wasn't true, thereby making it false. It's a charge. Have you ever heard of a woman who charged any man with anything and found to be uh, dishonest about that charge? Have you ever found them charged for that accusation? I think not. I think not. Herein lies the problem. Herein lies the problem, ladies. If you're allowed to do that without no recourse of action, no, no retribution, no consequence, nothing, then where is this society going? And furthermore, I want to say to you, ladies, where do you expect to get a man to take you serious ever? Hmm. Without fear, without trepidation, without hesitation. In dealing with you as a serious creature for a relationship, what would make a man confident to deal with you today? the modern woman with confidence when he knows he could be set up at any time and his voice of his own innocence will be discarded as if he said nothing at all. Again, no proof is needed. Just you and your word. Just you and your word can destroy any man I don't care what his nationality is. You and your word can destroy any man in the way the society is going today with making the narrative of the Me Too movement the end goal in women defending themselves as whether it's true or not. I'm going to give you an example. You ever seen kids on a playground? I'm going to show you how frivolous this is. Have you ever seen children on a playground? And uh, just use a hypothetical example. Someone comes out and give all the kids candy, but they didn't see the other little kid in the group. So they missed them. Didn't do it by purpose, on purpose, but they missed them. And what happens? The kid raises his hand up and says, me too. What is he trying to say? He's trying to say, you forgot me. Okay, well, what am I saying then? 
I'm saying there's a whole lot of women in the society. There ain't a damn thing been done to them. Oh, yeah, I said it. There's nothing been done to them. Nothing been done to them. But they see the train, the Me Too train coming down the track. The Me Too train coming down the track. They look through the windows of the train as it goes down the track and they see there's some seats available. Ah, let me jump on that train at the next stop. And then they get on the train and they say, me too. So-and-so did this to me. So-and-so did that to me. So-and-so here, hold, this one did that to me. Mind you, understand this. There is no man that's going to be accused of doing anything unless there's something to gain. Poor men do not suffer the Me Too movement. Very few. You got to be of some significance to be a victim of the Me Too. Or you just got to be plain stupid and sloppy in your movements and your behavior to become victim of the Me Too movement. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're simping, brothers, if you're simping, I get it. You don't know the difference between your foot and your head. So you don't know the difference. You're just doing anything. You're just being reckless. Then you get caught up in areas of this movement where you shouldn't even got involved in the first place because you ain't got nothing to offer. You're going to lose your regular job. You know, I'm talking about the ones that really get caught up. And we've seen it in social media. We've seen it on the news. These are not men that are broke. These are not men that don't have money. These are not men that don't have means. These are not many men that don't have influence. These are not men who don't make a difference in terms of what they do and what they contribute on a corporate level or a government level. These are the men who get targeted under this whole movement of Me Too. I mean, Pay attention to what's going on now. And I'm not a major supporter, but I want to make a point clear. Donald Trump, here's a woman popped up out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Huh, out of nowhere. The man did a whole term in the White House. You didn't hear nothing from this woman. These scrags come from under the rock. And they and she, what did she say? He he graped me. He graped me. I got to use great for internet purposes. <laughs> you understand. But he graped me. What? Where is the where is the police report if he graped you? Where is it? Where is it? Inquiring minds really want to know. Where is the police report? And if he graped you, where is the grape kit from the hospital that backs up and confirms that you were violated sexually. And I, I'll tell you this as a disclaimer. I don't support no man that does that. You got to be the sickest individual walking on two legs. If you take anything sexually from a woman, you are the worst. That's right. You, you're the worst. <laughs> you're the worst. You're the worst. And if you're guilty of it, they should put you under somebody's rock. Any any rock will do and leave you there. But for those that are innocent, who are right now doing time in prison over these kind of accusations, many of which did not require proof. This is what I'm saying, folks. How the modern woman is being weaponized against the, against the man, men of this society. That's what I'm talking about. How she's being weaponized. Let's get into it. This book, oh, very interesting book, I'll tell you. It's called How to Destroy a Man Now. And I want you to listen to what this young lady said. She wrote it. This book is available on YouTube, on uh, Amazon. Dot com how to destroy a man now if you you don't have to believe me just go to amazon <laughs> type in the title how to destroy a man now and you'll find that that book is not only available but it's being sold worldwide nationwide 
Uh, this is a real thing I'm talking about. Shout out to Camille Shabazz, who make who made me aware of this particular book. Let's get right into it. I'm just going to read a few things of it so you get a clear understanding of what I'm talking about. It starts off in the introduction. Mind you, the book is introducing you. <laughs> That's what an introduction is. Listen to this. As women, this is what she says. As women, we have been oppressed by men's physical advantage over us since the beginning of a humankind. But now, in today's modern society, the tables are finally turning, especially with the advent of the internet. <laughs> and you know how y'all ladies like to use the internet. And social media and the economy's transition from manufacturing to information, women are leveraging their natural advantages. What might that be? Let's get into it and find out. Social skills, emotional intelligence and communication. To gain power, you've probably utilized these advantages to some degree already in one form or another. For example, she gives examples. <laughs> How convenient. As a child in school, I recall the boys using physical strength and aggression, punching to bullying girls. That was their power. Listen to this. Girls, on the other hand, used communication and accusation. Example, spreading rumors to undermine the boys. Many of you ladies in school, you remember doing that. This is our power, she says. The purpose of this handbook is to be a resource, a collection of tools and techniques that have proven powerful in women's struggle against patriarchy. <laughs> I did not invent these methods. This is what she says. I did not invent these methods, but yet she supports these methods. <laughs> Go figure. You can't make that up. I only describe them. Be advised, she says. However, that the methods outlined in this handbook were chosen for their utility, their ability to achieve results, rather than for their leg legal or ethical merit. What is that saying? Let's stop right there. She goes on to say, these articles, this writing was chosen for their utility, meaning your ability to use it, or their ability to achieve results. And we can see it's, it's achieving results. We see that. Rather than for their legal or ethical merit, meaning it ain't really legal to do it. It ain't ethical to do it, uh, but we do it. Ha! Can't make it up. Let's keep going. <laughs> in other words, the information presented herein does not purport to be legally or ethical sound. What is considered to be right or legal often changes with time. And we, we found out that is true. The prevailing culture and the evolution of law. This handbook is a work of free speech. How the content is used or misused or not used is at the sole discretion of the reader and i as the author retain no responsibility look at how look at how she's putting this information out there yet she's trying to uh separate herself from the information that she made available <laughs> talking about making taking no accountability you can't make that type of stuff up you just can't <laughs> similarly I'm publishing this book under the pseudonym of Angela Confidential. She wouldn't even give her real name. She just said Angela Confidential. This is a woman that wrote a book and wouldn't give her last name. I'm guessing, um, I'm uh, assuming that the Angela is her first name. I'm assuming that. But she left out that last name because she know you can track her by the last name. To protect from backlash. See, she puts the information out for you ladies, but yet she don't want to get any backlash for doing it. I'll tell you, like I said in previous streams in the past, you ladies, you are not each other's friend. 
You do more to coddle and cover bad behavior than you do to tell each other what you need to do to get the results that you so desperately desire as it relates to relationships and the men you say you want. Yeah, you won't do that. Likewise, this young lady who wrote this book, she's proving that point. Thank you, Miss Angela Confidential. Listen to this before I continue. She says this, let's begin with some introductions. We have three key friends or fundamentals that make it possible to destroy a man now. She titled it in acronym DAMN, D-A-M-N. To damn well, it's important to know well, know them well. Our first ally in Allison is allegation. Allegation can be so simple, effective, and easy to employ that it's elegant. An allegation is a claim, usually without proof, that someone has done something illegal or wrong. A claim at minimal requires nothing more than an assertion. Wow. Just an assertion. This can destroy a man's whole life. Just an assertion alone. Huh. Let's continue. For example, if I yell from a rooftop that the world is flat, she says, I have successfully made a claim. Similarly, identifying wrongdoing requires only observation, recollection, or a minimal amount of imagination. From lying to murder, any behavior that you've heard or seen, experienced, or can think of that violates an ethical or legal standard can suffice for an allegation. However, it's the last part of that of what constitutes an allegation that makes it uniquely useful. You ready? You ready? She says, no evidence is required. Huh, let me read that again. Let me read that again. For those in the back that's sitting in the back that missed that, I'm gonna say it again. It says, however, it's the last part of what constitutes an allegation that makes it uniquely useful. Uniquely useful. No evidence. <laughs> is required <laughs> this independent this is independence from proof allows you to make an allegation about any man doing anything without being encumbered by a need for facts oh my god omg i should say omg man <laughs> this is insane can you believe this? Oh, shout out. Shout out to Angela Confidential. Shout out to Angela Confidential. I see why you left your last name out. I see why you did that. You want this to be completely confidential. You don't want no backlash because you know what? You're telling way too many secrets to the Me Too movement. Oh, you're telling, you're telling all the secrets of the Me Too movement. You wouldn't be able to walk outside if you told your last name. Ellen Confidential. You, you you would be in trouble if you tried to walk outside after telling your last name with this you're spilling all the beans again shout out to ellen confidential for writing this book appreciate you she goes on to say hmm. but how can something in, as intangible as the spoken word without evidence have enough merit or power to damn, meaning destroy a man now. Admittedly, if I left completely on, if left completely on her own, Allison allegation has relatively little power. That's where our other two friends, Mary, <laughs> listen to this folks, Mary Media and Author Authority assist. Now she got backup. See, she, she got a gang of people with her. I'm not talking about just the individual. I'm talking about the, the components of the story. She got a gang of people on her side. And who are these people on her side? Mary Media and Author Authority Assist. <laughs> Let's see what they do. Mary Media, our second ally, encompasses just about any means of communication. Media can be as elementary as whispers of gossip. 
Mm. Although nowadays the term most often refers to mass communication platforms such as television, the internet, or mainstream media networks. Of course, it also includes social media such as Twitter, Facebook, which you will soon see are especially well suited to damn, meaning destroy a man now. <laughs> oh man, thank you. Thank you, Angela Confidential. So how does Mary Media help Allison allegation? Inquiring minds still want to know. Let's continue. Well, interestingly, she says, they help each other. You've probably heard the philosophical question, if a tree falls in the woods and no one hears it, did it make a sound? You see the funny, funny play with situations? If no one heard the tree fall, that if the tree fell in the woods and nobody heard it, oh well. Did it make a sound? Of course it made a damn sound. Oh, it made a sound indeed. But here's the problem and here and where the lot where the problem lies. Let's continue. <laughs> She goes on to eloquently say, although the answer to that question is still debated, why is it debated? See, that's what that's where you know the level of stupid is. Everybody knows it doesn't matter who was in the woods. If the tree fell, it made a sound. Why is it debated? <laughs> why is it debated? Because no one was there to hear it fall, to hear the sound. Uh. So that means it didn't make a sound, right? Mm. Okay, well, let's continue. She goes on to say, goes on to say, although the question to that, uh, although the answer to that question is debated, it's certain that if an allegation is made and no one knows about it, it has no power. Oh, now we're getting to the level of playing the public ignorant and stupid you know those of you that watch this stream now those of you that catch it later you know damn well that whatever drops it made a sound regardless of who was around when it fell or not you know it made a sound and usually you'll see the evidence that it fell whether you heard the sound or not this is what we're getting into tonight. Where is your evidence to back up and confirm the accusations that you put on the men in the society with no goddamn proof? Oh, that's what we're talking about tonight. How the modern woman has been used as a weapon against the men of the society. This we're gonna get into tonight. Let's continue and see what Angela Confidential is still talking about. Oh, it's gonna get better. Okay, she goes on to say, so how does Mary Media help Allison allegation? Well, interestingly, <laughs> they help each other. You've probably heard the philosophical question. Again, if a tree falls in the woods and no one hears it, did it make a sound? We already know it does, right? <laughs> we already know that it does. Thankfully, for Allison allegation and for our purposes, the modern mainstream media excel at spreading information far and wide. Yeah, that's the court of public opinion. You know, the dumbasses that don't know nothing about the legal system. They get to choose whether your life is destroyed or not, men. They get to decide whether you lose your job or not, men. They get to decide whether you have to build up your reputation again for years, and sometimes you're not even successful at building your reputation. Based on an allegation, that was perhaps proven to be false, and yet no legal consequences are had against the woman who made those allegations. So we already know how that goes. We're talking about a mandemic, not a pandemic, a mandemic. 
again, thankful for the thankfully for Allison allegation. And for our purposes, the modern mainstream media excel at spreading information far and wide. They do it to make money, lots of money from advertisers. Yet advertisers need more than just a way to reach people. They also need a way to get people to pay attention to their advertisement and ultimately buy products. This is where media content comes in. Media content can be video, website posts, breaking news, and so on. Anything that garners interest. Hmm. And it's no secret that scandal attracts people's interest, especially well. Yeah, that's what's going on in these streets. That's what's going on in this society, no doubt. And that's what's going on. And it's no secret, again, that scandal attracts interest. We know that. And it's no secret that scandal attracts people's interest especially well. Sex sells. And the saying goes, and so does violence, injustice, misconduct, and anything else outrageous. That's why scandalous content in mainstream media has increased over the years. That's also why Mary Media helps allegation, Allison allegation, scandalous allegations attract people's interest. Interested people watch advertisements, sell products, and it makes Mary Media money. Yeah. You didn't think people made money off of this stuff, man? This is big business. Big business. However, however, fascinatingly, while the mainstream media profits from proliferating allegations, they bear little responsibility for doing it. They'll never take the blame for it. They just give you the platform to do it on. And then the spiraling whirlwind starts. Yeah, that's when it starts. Apparently, as long as the media mentions that the scandal is an allegation, if you've noticed, whenever we do anything in social media, whether true or imagined or suspected, we have to use the term allegedly. Allegedly is a safe term for when you don't actually have the facts and you're stating an issue. You have to use allegedly. That's to protect yourself, especially as a content creator. And that's to protect those who personally may be involved in what could be a fact. And perhaps you're details were not accurate you have to say it allegedly that protects you from a lot of different lawsuits and everything else that goes along with that uh statement so you have to use allegedly you know and like it says here like she so eloquently wrote in her book she goes on to write that's also why mary media Helps Allison allegations, scandalous allegations attract people's interest. Interested people watch advertisement, advertisement sell products, and it makes Mary Media money. However, fascinatingly, while the mainstream media profit from proliferating allegations, they bear little responsibility for doing it. Apparently, as long as the media mentions that the scandal is again an allegation, they are relatively safe from legal repercussions, like I just said. This is because in free speech societies like we live in in the USA, people can voice opinions and unsubstantiated claims. Further, the media can always attest that they are not making the allegations, rather they are just reporting it, which is what I'm doing. That's what I am, I'm a reporter. I might be a content creator, but by all intents and purposes, I'm a reporter. I'm an investigative reporter. I find information out. I do my investigations, my due diligence of getting the information in detail as much as I am physically able to do so. And as a result, it titles me without title, an investigative reporter. 
no doubt. So that's what I do. I report the news. This is what content creators do. Let's continue. She goes on to say, they also use the word allegation or alleged instead of using terms such as unsubstantiated claims or accusations without proof to de-emphasize that evidence is lacking. It's lacking, right? Even more cleverly, after the media makes an allegation popular by broadcasting, it far and wide they then circle back and later back, circle back later and broadcast how so many people are talking about it. Ha! <laughs> Isn't that interesting? They started off giving the report as alleged. Then they go back, come back and report again talking about how many people are talking about it. Ain't that something? Therein lies the court of public opinion against men uh, in this mandemic. How the modern woman is being used as a weapon against the men of this society cannot go overlooked, especially by the brothers who watch this stream. The men who watch this stream, man, let me tell you something, man. You better be very, very careful. There's so many scrags walking around looking for an opportunity to take you down simply on an accusation without proof. Just an accusation. Just an accusation. And I will tell you this, for any women that get triggered by this topic and this subject tonight, you're probably one of the ones that were either planning to do something like that or you're okay with women who do it. Because again, I'm gonna tell you something, women that are against this kind of behavior, they're not gonna log off this stream. They're not gonna do that. So all you did was showed your hand if you did. But this is what's going on today in the society, not just in the United States, but all over the world. This whole Me Too, Me Too, Me Too, uh huh, with no proof. No proof. If a man is going to be locked up, incarcerated, or his whole life destroyed over an allegation, should he not have the right on the behalf of his accuser to prove their allegation? To prove their accusation, should he not have the right to have that accusation proven beyond a shadow of a doubt? Should he not have that right? Yeah. So, you know, any of you sisters that's triggered and you want to get off the stream, then get the hell off the stream then. Because all it shows me is that you're okay with that kind of behavior. It means you're, point, you're one of the scrags that would do that. That's all. You're not a part of the elite ones that wouldn't do it. You're part of the ones that probably would. There's brothers right now in prison, right now in the ghetto based on an accusation and they didn't do it. So again, it goes across financial lines. You don't have to be rich. It happens across the board. It happens across the board. And the saddest part is that we have a justice system that they title as due process. You know, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Okay, so can you prove anything, ladies, when you bring a man up on accusations? Where's your receipts? When you buy something in a store, you get a receipt. Where is your receipts to prove the accusations that you impose upon a man that he did something to you? If he did it, he deserves the full weight of the justice system that we have in place. But again, did you prove it? Or is it just an allegation? This is what we're talking about tonight. This is what we're talking about tonight. Because I'll tell you something. I'm sick of hearing these accusations. They come out of the blue, out of nowhere. Out of the out of nowhere. And then there's no proof. There's no police report. There's no grape kit. There's nothing. Just you and your word. French toast that. Why should we believe you with no proof? 
and with no backup, meaning you were medically examined. If you, in fact, were raped, if you, in fact, were sexually assaulted, where's the videotape? Where's the CCTV evidence to prove your point? Do you deserve justice if this happened to you, ladies? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love women. I have granddaughters. I have a beautiful mother. I have a beautiful wife. I have women in my life that I love. And I would, I can't say it on YouTube, what I would do. If anybody violated any of the women in my life, you better, you be, I, don't, I ain't going to tell you what you better do, but I tell you what, you better be so far away that there's, there's, it's not even humanly possible for me to find you. You better be that far. So do I believe some of these stories are true? Yeah, I do. Do I believe men have done some horrible things to women? Yes, I do. But ladies, understand this. Don't fall for the hype. Don't be this kind of scrag. This jumps on an opportunity. But you have no proof to back up your claims, your accusations. Either real or imagined. And for you ladies who have absolutely been abused, I mean, really, you've really been abused. Understand that these scrags who are doing this, they're really making your case hard. They're making your claims hard, man. Hard to believe because you got so many dishonest claims that come out to be dishonest. Johnny Depp, his wife lied on him. Let's keep going, man. She lied on the man. Put his name out there. Destroyed him. Destroyed his career. There's no guarantee that he'll ever get another part. He's an actor, a well-known actor. And yet his life has been interrupted by a false claim. The same thing with Jonathan Majors, one of the co-stars of Creed. His girlfriend claimed he did something to her. Comes out that she attacked him in a ride share. Punching him, kicking him, scratched him, all kinds of things. The man did the right thing. He asked the cab driver, pull over and let me get out. He got out the car. What did she do? She did what a scrag does. She jumped out the cab, chased behind him, and started physically abusing him again. He tried to fend her off. She snatched she ripped the pocket on one of his coat, his coat jacket, and he finally he managed to get away. Salute to you, my brother. Only to find her just a few hours later in a club, five hours of video footage showing her dancing and having a good old time, taking shots, drinking, just partying her, partying her life away, right? When she said that she was scratched and that he broke her right finger. Oh, but the video footage shows that her finger was not broken. Oh, not at all. Her finger was not broken. Understand this, ladies. Women lying on men to get what they want at the expense of his own life, his own career, his own lifestyle has been going on for thousands of years. This ain't just start today. The Me Too movement was around thousands of years ago. It just wasn't called the Me Too movement. You know what it was called? Ball face lying. That's what it was called. Oh, yeah, that's what it was called back then. They didn't have a title for it. See, Me Too sounds like you're glorifying a lie. Makes, makes it sound good, you know? Makes it sound good. And it gives it a platform where everybody can jump on and lie at the same time. Yeah, with no proof. Huh. And for you Bible readers, let me show, let me shout you out for the Bible readers. When you get time after the stream, go to Genesis 39, 7. That's right. That's right. For the Bible readers, Genesis 39, 7. I'm going to read that for you. And then you go look at it to confirm what I read. Because, you know, a lot of you go to church and you, the pastor reads something out of the Bible. You never go home and verify whether he read the, read the verse correctly or not. <laughs> you know I'm not lying. You know that. 
somebody your family asked you how was church today you just say it was good <laughs> what the preacher talk about he talked about some good stuff but you never tell them what he talked about you can't go to bible and verse you certainly can't quote chapter and chapter and verse you can't do that so i'm gonna help you out tonight genesis 39 and 7 it's talking about something real specific as we read it says as we read yesterday Pontifor, I'm gonna go into this verse. Let me get this verse for you. Let me get this verse for you. Uh, this is a verse right here. Let me get this verse for you. It goes on to say, again, the verse is Genesis 39 7. As we read, Pontifor had entrusted Joseph with charge of his entire household. Pontifor could have could leave Joseph unattended and still trust him to act honorably and fulfill his responsibility but the same could not be said for Pontifer's wife huh let's stop there that's his wife this was Pontifer's wife he entrusted Joseph in his household he gave him he gave him authority over everything in his household except one thing which is what any man would have gave him authority over except one thing and that was what his wife now, i can go into talking about why he left the man in the house with his wife but that's a whole nother subject because i ain't nobody staying in the house with my wife i promise you that ain't no man staying in the house with my wife they better be my son it better be my sons ain't other than that it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen but anyway let's continue not only was joseph a young man he was also very handsome that's definitely not gonna happen in front of my way oh definitely he handsome and he's handsome and i'm gonna leave him with my wife oh no that's some simp action right there i'm definitely not doing that and as the days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months wow he was there for a long time unattended with pontifer's wife Ooh. pontiff white pontifer's wife became very attracted to this hebrew slave so attracted in fact that she pursued an adulterous affair with joseph again that's genesis 39 and 7 you can read it in your own leisure joseph refused her advances because he knew it was dishonorable to sleep with the wife of his master who deeply trusted him and because it was sin breaking god's law against adultery and fornication verses 8 and 9 this is one of many accounts in the Bible that prove that God's law was in effect long before it confided, before it codified at Mount Sinai. Now check this out. Check this out. Yet despite Joseph's rejections of her advances, Pontifer's wife continually tried to seduce Joseph into an affair. Just follow me, follow me, folks, follow me. And thank you all for getting on the stream tonight and sticking with your with your brother. Huh. Check this out. Yet despite his rejection of her advances, Pontifer's wife continually tried to seduce Joseph into an affair. Joseph remained strong and refused. He even avoided her to try to prevent confrontation. That's in verse 10. Though Paul wrote many hundreds of years later, Joseph understood the principle of his words in Corinthians 6, 18. Flee sexual immorality. Read that in your, also in your, in your leisure. Sexual temptation is vital when the temptation is in front of you. But it's even better if you flee the situation that can lead to the temptation. Now, check how this thing turned out. Just follow me. <laughs> The situation came to a climax when Pontifer's wife cornered Joseph. Oh, she was serious. She said, you're going to lay with me. I don't care what you say. You're going to lay with me right now. I don't care what you say. Right? The situation came to a climax when Pontifer's wife cornered Joseph and grabbed him. This time, Joseph had to literally flee. He fled so fast that he left his garment in her hands. That's in verse 11 through 12. Realizing Joseph would never give in to her, she falsely accused. Let's stop right there. What did she do? Who was coming on to who? Pontifer's wife was trying to get Joseph to sleep with her. Oh, yeah. A married woman 
was trying to get a single man who was handsome to sleep with her. Mind you, he was left in he was left in uh, Pontifer's house for not just a few weeks, but <laughs> a few months. Uh, I think that's where Pontifer dropped the ball, in my opinion. But that's just me. Realizing Joseph would never give in to her, she falsely accused him of trying to rape her. Verses 13 through 18 describes this. In his anger, Pontifer didn't listen to his faithful servant because she lied to her husband after he returned. He didn't listen to his faithful servant. Side of the story, he didn't listen to his side of the story and imprisoned Joseph. Even though Joseph was wrongly accused and jailed, God showed Joseph mercy and continued to bless him. Okay, we don't need to read no more. We see the point. We see the point. Folks, we see the point. Well, we definitely see the point. We see the point. These are the kind of machinations that are done today. Let's describe machination. Machination, by definition, is an act of machinating, a scheming or crafty action or artful design intended to accomplish some evil and some evil end. I'm gonna read that again. An act of machination, a scheming or crafty action or artful design intended to accomplish some usual evil end. This is what machination is defined as. What do we see today? What do we see today? Ladies, I've always stressed in every stream, the ultimate objective of us who are described as men, heterosexual men, we want you. We do, no doubt. That's what we were created to be attracted to, you. That's what we were created to do, be attracted to you. But well, I wanna ask you ladies a question that watch this stream. What incentive does a man have today in modern daytime to even take a woman serious? I'm talking about a single man who's looking for a wife. What in the society with what's going on with this pandemic would make a man secure enough to take the risk of dealing with you on a serious basis, on a serious level. He may buy you lunch at work. And I'm sure many of you ladies have been offered lunch on your jobs. He's attracted to you. And some of you ladies really play stupid as if you don't know a man is attracted to you. You know he's attracted to you. But some of you tend to play stupid as if you don't realize he's attracted to you. <laughs> you know, you know when you're attractive. Every woman knows when she's attractive. You don't have to tell her. If you tell her, uh, guys, that she's attractive and she's pretty or whatever, you're already telling her what she already knows. She already knows before she leaves her house how she's dressed. Oh, yeah. She knows how she's dressed. She stands in front of that long length mirror and she turns herself backwards and she looks over her shoulder at herself in that mirror to see what it looks like from the backside. If she's wearing tight jeans, she knows why. She knows what you're going to see when you see her. Every woman knows what she looks like long before she leaves that house she knows and she knows the kind of response that she's going to get from the men who she encounters during that day whether it's on the street and she don't have to work or whether she's at the work site she knows what kind of response she's going to get herein lies the problem 
when you get the response that you already expected, ladies, why do you turn? Why do many of you turn that response against the man who gave you the response that you already know damn well that you were going to get? Why? By nature, a man is designed again by nature to be attracted to you. So if you're showing yourself in a way that attracts a man, why should he not display or express his attraction to you? Now, you don't have to be attracted to him, but why would you hold him accountable or why would you make him wrong? for showing his attraction when that's his nature to be attracted to you. Why would you take that response and then use it against him? I'm talking about for I'm talking about I'm talking to those of you who do this. I'm not talking about the victims who have truly been victimized. I'm talking to you those of you who raise your hand like children and say me too when you know not a damn thing has happened to you talking to you oh this is a controversial stream tonight and i'm sure many of you are going to be triggered but trigger you must be because this is a mandemic this is a mandemic this is not something that women experience because i'll tell you something if 10 men came public and said they were sexually harassed on the job site it would usually in most cases go unanswered why because men simply don't get sexually attracted, sexually harassed, right? Yeah. There's no cases of a woman grabbing a man by his junk at his job. No. That doesn't exist, right? Or a woman squeezing a man's backside on the job site. That doesn't exist, right? Unwanted sexual attention. That doesn't happen to men on the job site, right? No, that doesn't happen. It doesn't even happen. It's absurd to even think in fact that a man could be graped by a woman what what there are men that are drugged drugs are put in their drink and they are sexually assaulted while they're under the influence against their will oh yeah even robbed while they're under the influence after being drugged by a female we know this is true Cardi B made it clear that she used to do that before she became a celebrity. And yet nobody gave her backlash. You ladies, nobody, none of you ladies said anything to Cardi B about, oh, you're wrong for doing that. Oh, you, nobody, nobody demonized her. Nobody told her how horrible she was. Nobody did none of that. But let a man have come publicly and admitted to something like that. Oh, we got a horrible dis. We got a horrible double standard when it comes to this kind of thing. Man. Oh yeah, I'm talking to the men that watch this stream. Oh, be careful, brothers. Be very careful. Uh, I will tell you, boys to men wrote a song many years ago. Never trust a big button to smile. Yeah, some of you brothers are falling victim to the big button to smile. And you wonder why you're getting caught up. Uh-huh. You're getting caught up. You're getting caught up because you trust in a big butt and a smile. And the tragedy of it all. The tragedy of it all. Pardon me one second, family. Pardon me one second. Anyway, we're going to continue. Some of you brothers, uh, we lost a little sound, but we good. As long as you guys can hear me, that's all. That's all we need. Uh, put a one in the chat room if you can hear me. Put a one in the chat room if you can still hear me well. I want to make sure we didn't lose anything. Put a one in the chat room. If you can still hear me well, put a one in the chat room. Put a one in the chat room if you can still hear me well. If you can still hear me well, put a one in the chat room. All right, we're going to continue. Um, what I find is 
many men who have these issues on their job sites. And trust me, there's many men that suffer from these same issues all over the country, unreported, not just over, over the country in the U.S., but all over the world in different countries like London, different uh, first world countries, I should say. A lot of this stuff is going on, but men don't don't typically report these kind of issues. And usually it's because they know for a fact no one's going to believe them anyway. <laughs> you got men that will laugh at them for reporting something like that. Like what? You had a woman come at you physically like that, bro, and you reporting it? As if we should be okay with being sexually harassed. Because we're men. We don't have any boundaries, right? Is that what the narrative is? What about the men that are married that are sexually harassed on their job? Should they not report that they've been sexually harassed? Why do you think so many cases like this? And I mean, it's more than you can be. You would be baffled to know the amount of cases like this that simply go unreported where men are, con are concerned. The society is not set up to believe us. Guys, the society is not set up to believe you if you make such an accusation. And sadly enough, the men who hear you make that accusation will clown you to death for making the accusation. To go to show you the programming psychologically that we have, we believe that men can't be sexually harassed. So where's the Me Too movement for men who have been sexually harassed their whole life? And yet there is no platform. There is no governmental platform at all for a man to make those claims that they've been sexually harassed. But women can make the claims without proof. They can make the claims again without any medical proof, much less law enforcement proof. They can just simply make the claim and a man's life is completely obliterated, destroyed absolutely destroyed this is the problem this is the problem this is the problem and i believe if this problem is not brought under some type of governmental control while we find accusations to be proven false and men's lives and reputations are destroyed what is it going to be in the next 15 to 20 years? Guys, will you even stand a chance? I mean, you, you, you stand a snowball's chance in hell right now. It's going to get worse. <laughs> it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. You know? And when does it stop is the question. Where does it stop? Where does it stop? That's the biggest question of it all. I want to read one more section of this particular pamphlet. And again, this is a book that was written by Angela Confidential, who was afraid to give her last name. And uh, I can't really say with certainty that even Angela's her first name. <laughs> she made it clear why she titled it, uh, why she authored it at Angela Confidential, because she wanted to avoid backlash. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure she's not only enjoying the backlash, but she's also enjoying the sales of the book. And I would encourage every man that watched this stream, you know, by default, you're going to put some money in her hand by buying the book. But I, I think you need to get this book so that you can protect yourself from the buffoonery that some of you guys are doing. Massaging her back at the work off at the office site. Knock it off, man. You know, all up in her face at the job site. She ain't showed you no choosing signals at all. And you just making a complete perpetual fool out of yourself. Not only that, but you're setting yourself up to progress and to escalate in your behavior to where you end up with charges against you, bro. You end up losing your job, man. You know, if she don't, first, if you know, that whole idea of it. it if, if, if you don't succeed, at first you don't succeed, try and try again, you might as well throw that out the window, man, when it comes to dealing with some of these females, man. Don't do it.
If at first you don't succeed, cancel it and move on. Don't keep trying to succeed. Because what, what you're going to succeed in doing is putting yourself in prison and getting yourself in trouble or losing your job, man, or losing your career or losing whatever you worked so hard to achieve. You're going to lose it by going after a lot of these scrags who look for an opportunity to take you down. That's right. That's right. That's what you're setting yourself up for. Don't do it. Check this out. This is something else Miss Angela Confidential wrote before we close. She says, once authorities decree that there is a victim of a violation, they can take punitive actions against the per per perpetrator. Destroy a man. Punitive actions usually entail substantial loss, such as termination of employment, loss of income, loss of education or, cer or certifications. Example, dismissal from school or revocation of credentials, loss of social status, or good reputation, example, public shame, humiliation, loss of financial savings, example, payment for legal settlements, and loss of freedom, example, imprisonment, bruh, imprisonment, bruh. In addition, the combined action of Allison Allegation. <laughs> Mary Media and author authority generally result in ongoing loss or the loss of future opportunities. In this way, a man is truly damned. <laughs> Indeed. Which with a smeared reputation or record of alleged misconduct. No one will want to be associated with him. No one will want to employ him. No one will want to help him. Huh. And no one will even believe him. Bro, did you hear that? Brothers, did you hear that? Men, did you hear that? No one is going to believe you even when you tell the truth. No one is going to believe you, man. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful of your circle before they hurt you. Be careful. Be careful in your workplace, man. There's an old saying I heard for those of you that are doing this silly stuff on your work site and you're single. If you're married and you're doing it, you're already trash. So I ain't talking to you. If you were a you in a dedicated relationship, man, you already you, you you cheating on you you already messed up. So I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to the single brothers who are open to relationships. If you're doing it this way on your job site, I'm gonna tell you right now, man. You need to tread backwards. Stop it. Stop it, man. For you destroy yourself. Stop it. Just stop it. For you destroy yourself. Because they're not gonna believe you. Even when you're innocent, again, a woman can uh, lever, she can levy an allegation against you. She don't need proof. She don't need legal proof and she don't need medical proof that you did anything to her. All she needs is two things. Herself and the allegation and you go down the tubes. First, in the court of public opinion, public opinion sways every jury. Make no mistake about it. Don't fool yourself. Public opinion sways the decision of every jury. There is no jury once your allegation becomes public that is not swayed by those same opinions of the public. Don't fool yourself. That being ju judged by a jury of your peers is complete bullshit. It's no such thing. A jury that has privy, that is, has been exposed to the public and what they feel about your case, their decision is swayed by the public's opinion. Understand, you are judged first in the court of public opinion. Simply based on an allegation with no proof, again, 
legally or medically, your life can be destroyed. Protect yourself. Watch yourself. Don't be so thirsty for these females that you stop thinking about your own, your own safety. Don't be so thirsty that you stop thinking about your own safety. There's a pandemic going on. You need to mask yourself up and stay masked and don't take the mask off during this pandemic or you will find yourself infected. Because again, you trust a big button to smile, that girl is poison. You remember that song by Boys to Men? It made it many, many, many years ago. A lot of brothers slept on that song and that's why they're making the mistakes they're making right now. But um, I'm helping you out. Thank you for jumping on the stream tonight. I hope that when you came into the stream, you hit that subscribe button and the share button. Support the stream. Support the stream. Because I continue, I'm going to continue giving you content. That's going to help you, man. You know, that's going to help you. I'm a man just like you. The same thing that happens to any other man can happen to myself as well. That's why I'm talking to you. That's why I'm talking to you. You got to guard yourself, man. You got to be careful. How the modern woman is being used as a weapon against the men of the society is a real issue. It's a pandemic, For real. It's a real serious issue. Not that women, again, are not being abused. No, there's many that are being abused. Sure. But why would I would say to you, ladies, going forward, that if a man abuses you, don't take the law into your own hands. You take him to court. But make sure that you have the physical proof to support your claims and to support your accusation, to support what you're ch charging this man with doing to you. Don't just say a man did something to you and you can't prove it. And because the society doesn't hold you to the carpet to prove it, you go along with the story, knowing that you destroying a man's life if in fact it didn't happen to you. What kind of human being are you anyway if you can do that? That's what I would like to know. And for those victims who are sincerely, who have sincerely been victimized, look what you're doing to them. You don't have any respect for the real victims, the ones who truly have been victimized. You have no respect or concern for them. They need justice. They want justice. There's people running around that really victimized them. But here you scrags come along with a lie, jumping on the Me Too wagon, making an allegation against a man that you know damn well ain't nothing happened to you. You're looking at a financial come up. Knock it off. Knock it off. Get a life. Do something with yourself. Instead of trying to make up a story that happened to you and it didn't happen. And I'm only talking to those of you that are liars. I'm talking to you. Knock it off. Knock it off. Just because a society will support you without proof. You still got to live with that. There's a higher authority that will judge you based on that. No doubt. There's a higher authority that will judge you on that. No doubt. So again, with that being said, I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. I hope this was informative for you. I hope that you learned something from what I shared with you tonight on this stream. Again, shout out to Abdul for getting on the stream. Shout out to Margaret. Oh, uh, for those of you who don't know who Margaret Burns is, that's my mom. Shout out to my mom. Huh. Love you, mom. Shout out to my mom for getting on the stream tonight. You know? Yeah. For those of you that think I hate women and all that kind of stuff, I got a beautiful mom. And I got a beautiful wife. And I got a beautiful granddaughters. And I got beautiful nieces. I love women. I'm just against the buffoonery. And trust me, buffoonery is at an all-time high. Oh, yes. It's at a full-time high. A full-time high. Society supports the buffoonery. And society before, uh, supports the dishonesty. And many of the women who come forth and destroy men's lives. And this is what this whole stream was all about. Again, this is not a shot at any of the real victims. No, I support you getting the justice that you deserve. 
I hate, and I mean with a deep hate, I hate men who victimize women. I hate it. I can't stand it. But ladies, you need to prove your claim. You can't come out of the woodworks at 80 with a cane and a walker talking about somebody did something to you in 1942 with no proof. Knock it off. When it happens, you report it when it happens. Don't wait 15 years later, 20 years later. What kind of justice system do you think you live under? If you report it when it happens, the justice system <laughs> is compelled to deal with it at the time you report it. Don't wait to where you think it's an opportune time to report it. And then it's not true. Because I truly believe this. Outside of the stigma of women that they... Uh, that they face, especially in sexual crimes, where they have to relive the whole crime over in court. I get it. They don't want to relive the whole crime over and over and over and over in court, have to keep repeating what happened. So they they decide, you know, I'm going to just let it, I'm going to just let sleeping dogs lie. I'm going to get over it. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to find God. I'm going to find Jesus. And, you know, I'm just going to get over it. And I'm going to forgive and forget. I get it. Some of you are victims of that thought process. I understand. But understand this. In a society that is running a justice system according to record, according to black and white and how the justice system should be run, where you have to prove your case, you're hurting your case by not reporting it at the time that it happens. And if you do it outside of reporting it, why is anyone why is anyone hard pressed to believe you that you're telling the truth if you have nothing to prove it if i'm a carpenter i have to prove that i'm skilled at carpentry true or not if i'm a lawyer and i get in the courtroom i have to prove that i'm skilled to be a lawyer i have to take a bar exam that proves that i'm capable of um uh, executing the information that's in that curriculum in a courtroom effectively to defend or to prosecute. I have to prove myself. Everything we do in life, we have to prove ourselves. You can't get a driver's license without proving that you can drive. You can't get any kind of any certification without going through the necessary curriculum then taking a final exam to prove that you have retained that information. Why is it in the legal system, ladies, you get to make an accusation or level an accusation against a man and not required to prove your case? And yet a man's life is destroyed. That's what this stream is about. It's not to beat you up. It's not to call you all liars. No, I'm just saying if something happened to you, prove it. And make sure you can prove it before destroying a man's life. We all got one life to live, not two. We got one. Don't you be the uh, perpetrator of destroying a man who only has one life based solely on an opportunity or based solely on an outright lie. Don't you be that one. Because you'll have to live with that. You'll have to live with that. And with that being said, I am your host of Let's Talk About It Now. I thank all of you who jumped on the stream on my Facebook group of Let's Talk About It. And I thank all of you that watched the stream on YouTube at, at Let's Talk About It Now. Again, I am your host. I'm Charles Chambliss. My intent is to bring you real content about real issues. That's what we do here. That's what we do over here. With that being said, folks, have a fantastic evening. What's left of it. And enjoy your weekend. I look forward to getting before you again tomorrow night. 
We are out. Have a good night, folks.